Okay, guys. Well, we're going to continue the theme. Um, and if you watch the last video that I'm uploading now, it was about our spiritual authority. And we have authority. With all the things that are going on in the world, we have authority. We don't have to fear any of those things. We don't have to worry about those things. Um, and I wanted to point out when, and I have this, this experience from the Army, and anybody else who's been a veteran knows this too, that there's two kinds of leaders. One that wins wars and one that wins wars by winning battles. And what that means is that there's some people that when they, they go, they get sent out, their goal is to get as much commendation as they can, get as many rewards as they can or, and awards to look good for everybody, especially if they're about to retire. And that was the case whenever I went. Um, when that happens, this person in their mind says, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to show everybody what's, what for. And they get people killed. They get soldiers killed. And there's blood on their hands because of the decisions they made. Now, in war, you can't help it. People are going to die. But the decisions you make could attribute to that or could pull away from that. Now, you have other leaders who they go in there. And even if, it's, even if this is their last deployment and then they're retiring after that, they go in there and they understand we have little battles we need to win. Those little battles that we win are going to lead us to victory in the war. They take everything into account. They look at all the situations. They value their soldiers. And they win these little battles and keep the uh, collateral damage down to a minimum. <coughs> Excuse me. But not everybody, not everybody's like that. Not every leader is like that. And some I've wondered how they became leaders. But there's, I don't even know why I shared that. Oh. Um, so when we're going out there and we're fighting the spiritual fight, we don't want to try to win the spiritual war. The spiritual war is going to be won by Jesus Christ, and that'll be on the day we return with him, um, and he takes his kingdom back. And ultimately, the final battle will be won at the end of the millennial reign. But we don't, us, we're the, we're the sergeants, we're the, you know, the, the commanders and different things, in different positions we are, platoon leaders, down here on our level. And we're not trying to win the war. We're trying to win the battles. And that's what Christ gave us this authority for, is to win these short little battles that we have down here that are going on in our lives. I'm going to read 1 Peter 3. Now, the first part is talking about wives being submissive to husbands, but there's hidden knowledge in here. The second part gets into the meat and potatoes of, of the subject we're talking about. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even... If some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. So, wives, if you're married to someone who's not a believer, do the right thing. Uh, I actually had somebody here at the beginning of the year I was communicating with by email. And I was trying to answer some questions. And I don't know who it is. I don't know where they went. I don't know what happened to them. But in the, it was like this person was looking for someone to say, you need to divorce your husband. And I can't say, I can't tell somebody that. That's not, I don't have that, that kind of authority. This person has to make their own decision on that. But I had never heard from him again. And I don't know if something happened. I don't know what was going on. It's hard in those cases to give proper spiritual advice when you don't know all the details. Um, and I hope everything worked out good for that person, but I haven't heard from him since. But she, being a believer, could have won her husband and her children over by her conduct, by how she was wearing. And I was trying to tell her that stand firm in your faith, stand up for God and let, let them ridicule you. Let them mock you. If that's what's going on. Let them be abusive, stand your ground, hold on to what you have and do according to how God wants you to do things. And let that be an example to them. If the situation gets where they're not going to, they're not going to have it. God will give you a way out of that. But, and after that, I never heard from her. So I don't know. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be... Blah, blah, blah. Locked up again. Okay. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart 
with the incorruptible beauty of the gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. So he wants us not to be out there hollering and yelling and carrying on. He wants us to be quiet, humble, simple, because that's how his manner is. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands, this isn't just about being against wives or telling wives what to do. Husbands also. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife. Now, a lot of guys will refer back to the Bible and go, look, you're supposed to be subservient to me. No, that is not what the Bible is saying. You, as the husband, as the leader, are supposed to take care of your wife. Very good care of her. She's the one that gives you children. Dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. So you see what he did was he used that as an analogy. Wives, this is how you should be to your husbands. Husbands, you have the greater responsibility because it's your job to take care of her. Your job to deal with her, have patience with her. My wife, sometimes she's very reactionary in how she deals with things. And I, I think she believes, but she's very reactionary. And there's tons of other stuff. But sometimes I don't even say a word. I just let her get, get it out, let her get mad. Let her do whatever she's going to do. Let her fly off the handle because she hasn't come to that point yet. As a husband, as much as I don't like being around it, as a husband, it's my job to be patient with her. It's my job to let her get through this storm and then bring her to a, a place of understanding. That's why God put us together. We're a complement to each other. When I'm weak, she's strong. When she's weak, I'm strong. That's a team. <coughs> of all the people... Back whenever we got married, of all the people we've known, we've known a ton of people that have gotten married, all but, I think all but two couples have gotten divorced. We've known a bunch of people. But as far as I can remember, I think all, of, all but two have gotten a divorce. And that's saying something. Because when we got married, we got married under really harsh conditions. But we stuck with it. And we've worked through it and we've come a long way and we're still going and we're going to keep going all the way up until the day the Lord takes us. The whole idea behind marriage is, is realizing what your place is. You have give, been given certain gifts. You've been getting like, I, I, I want to do the finances, but my wife's good at it and it makes her feel good to do the finances. I don't touch them. Okay. That's yours. You do it. I don't worry about that. And, um, when it comes to, vehicles and stuff like that she always has the better vehicle i always give her the better vehicle I always buy her the better vehicle i've never owned a new vehicle i'm never going to i'm happy with something old and worn out because i'm a good mechanic and i can keep it going i make sure she has it so she doesn't have any struggles on the road taking care of my wife i make sure she has plenty of money when i went to iraq i hardly took i hardly used any money maybe a hundred bucks a paycheck we got paid twice a month and everything else stayed home Make sure the bills are paid. Make sure things are taken care of. Now, do we butt heads? Absolutely. Do we have uh, disagreements on certain things? Absolutely. But ultimately, what it comes down to, because I've pulled back and have tried to deal with things in a more godly manner, what it comes down to is we end up doing better on the other end because I'm putting godly principles to it. By doing that, I'm helping her and leading her closer to Christ. But when I'm weak, when I'm struggling... God puts a word in her heart to give to me, and he talks to me through her, and I've, this has happened, and she hasn't even realized it in some cases. And so it, it's a blessing for us to be together, and it's a blessing for us to work together. Now, the subject changed in verse 8, talking about brothers and sisters in Christ, that we should interact almost the same way. Not quite, but almost. We're all a part of the same body. We all work together for the same thing. 
Um, verse 9, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. This is a hard thing to do. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their hearts, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We don't want to be, I mean, everybody was scared of me. Still, people are scared of me because of what I was before. When I came out of the army, I was very big, strong, hardcore with my attitude, very forward with it. Still, even whenever I walk into a store, you know, it commands attention because of my presence. But I've changed how I deal with things. I smile all the time. I address people properly. Um, I go out of my way to be kind and polite and to be nice to disarm that. Because your appearance, people would judge the first 10 seconds by your appearance. And by what you say. So if what you say is correct right up front, then... And, and how many times can you shut down somebody's anger... By simply being polite and being kind. So it's important to understand where you're from. And that's why we read stuff like this. Um, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. And they will be. They will be ashamed. For it is better if uh, it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than doing evil. So if you do good and you get beat up for it, great. Endure it. Don't worry about it. Because it's better for that to happen to you. That's a blessing to you. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So the example he's showing is Jesus did something good for all those that hated him. And he was punished for it by men. You be the same way. And just endure it. If you, This is understanding. But I did all these good things for them. Why are they? That's okay. Let them do it. This is also our spiritual authority that we have. We stand our ground in those things. Because a lot of people will back down. At that point is when you stand your ground. Uh, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also we went and preached uh, to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Did you notice what he said in here about baptism? You know, that's a hot button issue right now, too. There is also an antitype which now saves us, which is baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. It's not about the water baptism. So there's tons of proof in here about that. But, so what is he saying and what is he telling us to do? With our spiritual authority, we fight the good fight. Sometimes fighting that good fight is not doing nothing at all. Sometimes it's just sitting there. I've, I've, I've had to do it. Just sit there and just look. And just let the storm pass. Because some people, that's, that's all they're, they're, in the moment they're reacting, or that's all they feel good about doing is doing that. Now, at some point, it'll get bad enough you have to walk away. It is what it is. But with our with our spiritual authority, there's no need for us to go back at that person. Because their heart will get convicted when they attack you for no reason. Their heart will get convicted when they do you wrong and then realize it. So with your authority, don't, don't abuse your authority. Use your authority because you may be able to lead that person to Christ with that authority. 
So I hope that helped. I hope that made sense. I feel like I didn't explain it real well, but I love you guys. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. And I think that's it for today, unless something else comes up. Um, keep watching the Middle East. Lots going on. Lots being pushed. And we're getting close to a war or something kicking off over there. And we know what that means when that war happens over there. It's going to be a good time for some people and a bad time for other people. I'll see you guys in the next video.